Hello my dear children, I hope you all are doing good. So today in this video we will be looking into an another poem, Marshlands, written by Emily Pauline Johnson, given in your English literature book. So before looking into the explanation of the poem, first let us know about the poet, Emily Pauline Johnson. Emily Pauline Johnson, a Canadian poet, writer, artist and performer, was born on March 10, 1861 on the Sixth Nations Reserve near Branford, Ontario. Pauline Johnson was one of Amer North America's most notable entertainers of the late 19th century. She was a mixed-race woman of Mohawk and was the daughter of a Mohawk chief and his English wife. Children, Mohawks are American Indian people of Mohawk River Valley uh, in New York. Emily Pauline Johnson was a gifted writer and poised orator. Johnson made important contribution to indigenous and Canadian oral and written culture. She is listed as a person of national historic significance and her childhood home is a national historic site and museum. She was one of 12 Canadian women in consideration to appear on a banknote. Pauline Johnson began writing poetry in her mid-teens. She published prolifically in newspapers and magazines in the early years of her career. Johnson's poetry often uses the tone and structure of English poetry to convey native legends and beliefs with a dramatic intensity. Her first collection of poetry, The White Wampum, was published in 1895, in, which includes both poems and tales. Two more collections of poetry followed as well as three collections of fiction. So children, now let us look into the introduction and the summary of the poem, Marshlands. So this poem is a sonnet of 14 lines with 17 couplets. Children, a sonnet is a 14 line poem with a fixed rhyme scheme. And a couplet is a literary device made up of two rhyming lines of poem. So this poem is a 14 line uh, sonnet with 7 couplets. So now in this poem, the poet provides the visual images to showcase the worth of marshlands to those who can appreciate its value. The poet describes a peaceful and romanticized picture of the marshlands in this poem. The images that she evokes and the choice of the words are poignant. There is a general feeling of mystery when after sunset, the evening sky seems yellow and wet where it touches the water in the marshland at the horizon. The shallow pools in the marsh filled with mold and moss glisten like golden cups. The marshland is dark and dank in some places, yet is teeming with life in other areas. Among the growth of wild plants, the lizard chirps in monotonous and the wild goose takes shelter among the rushes on which the lichen cling. Cranes fly into the oncoming night and finally twilight covers the area in a veil of thick grey mist as the marsh prepares to sleep. So now let's see what the poem says. Marshlands by Emily Pollen Johnson A thin wet sky that yellows at the rim And meets with sun-lost lip the marsh brim The pools low-lying, dank with moss and mould Glint through the mildews like large cups of gold Among the wild rice in a still lagoon In monotone the lizard shrills his tune the wild goose homing seeks a sheltering, while rushes grows and oozing lichens cling. Late grains with heavy wing and lazy flight sail up the silence with the nearing night, and like a spirit swathed 
in some soft veil steals twilight and its shadow over the swale hushed lie the sedges and the vapors creep thick gray and humid while the marshes sleep so this was the poem and now let us understand this poem line by line a thin wet sky that yellows at the rim and meets with sun lost lip the marsh brim so children here are two terms which may confuse you and they are rim and brim children rim is the edge of the sky and brim is the top edge of the land okay so the edge of the sky where it meets the land is rim and the top edge of the land where it meets sky is brim now the first line describes the sky which is thin and wet and looks down uh, over the top of the marshes as if at any moment it could break open and rain the edge of the uh, sky that is the rim is of yellow color since the sun has just set the edge of the sky appears yellow in color so after reading this line we come to know that the sun in the sky has almost vanished leaving yellow color at the rim of the sky it it has disappeared from the sky and the sky appears to be wet and very thin as if a storm is about to come to drench the land as if it is going to rain and the second line says that the sky appears to meet the marsh brim that means the marshland's edge the sky appears to meet at the top most uh, edge of the marshland now how does it look when the the edge of the sky and the edge of the uh, land meets together it appears to look like a lip yes the sun uh, disappears the sun sets in such a way that the yellow light from the sun and the blue line from the sky uh, together they appear to look like a lip when the edges of the sky and the marshland meet it appears to look like lips so the sun lost lip here means that the sun sets in such a way that the yellow light which it leaves in the sky uh, when meets with uh, the color of the sky at the edges of the sky and the marshland it appears to look like a lip now let's look into the second couplet the pools low lying dank with moss and mold glint through their mildews like large cups of gold so this couplet describes the pool that make up more of the space of the marsh because of these pools the marshlands are wet so the pools are low lying that means the pools are at low height at low altitude they are low in ground and filled with moss and molds these areas are not pleasant for at least to those who do not reside within the area who do not inhabit or live within the area though these pools uh, they look unpleasantly wet and cold they are very fertile and also these pools shine through their mildews glint means to shine so these pools shine through their mosses and plants and fungus like a large cup of gold because of the setting sunlight because of the yellow light that falls from the sky after the sun set over the marshland over the fungus over the mosses of the marshland it uh, make them glow like it make them glimmer like gold and so the poet says that the pools glimmer the pools shine like large cup of gold due to the uh, light yellow light that falls from the sky on the marshland the third couplet says among the wild rice in the still lagoon in monotone the lizard shrills his tune 
Sahasra Lagoon is a lake of sea water that is partly separated from the sea by rock or sand. And shrill means loud and pleasant sound. So in this couplet, the speaker describes about the lives in the marshland. The poet refers the marshland as a lagoon, as a lake and says that in this still lake where the rice, uh, wild rice are seen to be grown, the lizard lives. The lizard lives among these wild rice of the still lake and uh, makes a very unpleasant, very unpleasant, repeated loud sound which uh, the poet calls tune. The wild goose homing seeks a sheltering where rushes grow and oozing lichens cling. Oozing means a soft sticky liquid deposit on something and cling means to hold on to something. So the poet now says that the wild goose who is returning home after a long journey and is in search for a shelter somewhere knows that among the uh, grasses and oozing lichens they can take shelter and rest. Through these lines the poet wants to give a clear picture of how the land is important to both plants and some of the animals. It plays host to a great variety of species. The next couplet says, The late grains with heavy wing and lazy flight sail up the silence with the nearing night. The word heavy wing tells us that the crane is quite big, there, uh, it is huge. So the poet says that the huge cranes fly slowly into the night sky. It is having a lazy flight. There is no rush in its action. There is no hurry. Because the night is coming more strongly and the marshland is under the silence of the sky. That means the marsh is preparing to sleep in the swirling mist. And like a spirit swathed in some soft veil, steals twilight and its shadows over the swale. So the poet in this couplet describes how the night is taking over the land, how the darkness is covering the land. It is described as being like a spirit that moves slowly and darkness comes over the land. Now, as the darkness covers the land, it takes away the remaining bits of the twilight, the remaining uh, beautiful golden color of the sun. It takes away the light completely and uh, now it is dark. It is night. Now there are shadows over the marshes or the valleys. Hushed lie the sedges and the vapors creep, thick, gray and humid while the marshes sleep. So hushed means very quiet and still and creep means scary. So the poet says that the sedges, the, all the plants and other creatures are very quiet and still in this night. And the vapors, that means the fog, the mist, uh, seems very scary in this night. And due to the fog, the air appears to be very thick, grey and humid, pressing down on the wetlands as they sleep. Uh, here at night, the air at the marshes is very scary and rest of the environment all around is silent. Everyone is in silence. And when morning comes, great variety of lives, all kinds of plants and animals that live in marshes will become active once more. So in this whole poem, the poet wants to convey that the marshland is a very beautiful place for those who have the eyes to appreciate it. It is fertile with plants that thrive in it. It is home to people who feel a belonging to the land and also a place for people like the crane to take off to distant lands. So this was it for today children. I hope you've understood this poem. Uh, if you have any problem, please let me know. Thank you.